Hey everybody and welcome to How To Videos with Dr. Amy Gates. This video is going to show you examples for calculating percentages and areas and so on using normal probability distributions and Z tables. We have a few different examples we're going to go through. I'm going to write out the examples as we go so you can actually see the problem solving. And this is a three-part series, so this is going to be part one of three parts. So let's get started. In this case, suppose adult female height is normally distributed with a mean of 65, I'm sorry, 64.5 inches and a standard deviation of 3.25 inches. The question is, suppose to drive a race car, a female has to be within two standard deviations above or below the mean. What is the range of female heights for women who can drive race cars? All right, so to solve this problem, we want to think to ourselves, okay, we're looking for the range of females, or we're looking for the maximum height and the minimum height of females who are able to drive race cars. We know that the maximum height is going to be women who are two standard deviations above the mean. We know that the minimum height is going to be for women that are two standard deviations below the mean. So how do we figure out this exact height? Well, we take our mean, which is 64.5 inches, and to get the upper bound, we actually add on two of our standard deviations. And this is going to give us the upper bound, or the tallest that a woman can be. And in this case, when we calculate this out, we get that it's about 71 inches. We're going to do the same thing to get the shortest height, or the lower bound. We're going to take our mean again, but instead of adding, we're going to subtract away these two standard deviations. We've got two of them. And when we remove two full standard deviations, we're going to get the shortest female that's able to drive race cars. And this is going to be our lower bound, we'll call it. And when we do these calculations, they come out to be 58 inches. So this tells us in the end that the shortest woman that can drive our race cars is 58 inches. The tallest woman is 71 inches. All right, let's go ahead and look at the next example. In example B, we're being asked to estimate the relative frequency of female heights that will occur between 59.625 inches and 71 inches. And again, remember that our female heights are normally distributed with a mean of 64 and a half inches and a standard deviation of 3.25 inches. Now in this case, the key word here is estimate. Because we're being asked to estimate the relative frequency or the percentage of female heights that will occur between these two values, we can use the empirical rule, or sometimes called the 68-95-99 rule. It's kind of distributed here. We can see that between the mean and one standard deviation, we have about 34.1% of all of our females. Also, between the mean and minus one standard deviation, we also have 34.1% of our females. All of this dark blue between minus one and plus one standard deviations is about 68.2%. So that's a fairly large percentage of our females are really clustered very close to the mean, and that's what it means to be normally distributed. We also know that as we get a little farther out on the tails, 13.6% are as far as between minus two standard deviations and minus one. That's what this little area is here. And if we were to add up all of these four percentage groups, all of everything between minus two and positive two standard deviations, we get about 95% of the data. So in order to be able to use this and to figure out an estimate of the percentage of females between these two heights, we're first going to have to convert these heights into Z values, or standardized deviations, so we can use these measurements. The formula that we're going to use to do that is we're going to take our given value, which is 59. 625. We're going to subtract away the mean of the problem, that's 64.5, and we're going to divide by the standard deviation, that's 3.25. And when we do that, it tells us that our shorter women in this group, the ones that are 59.625 inches, 
are actually minus 1.5 standard deviations away from the mean. That makes sense because women who are 59.625 inches are shorter than the mean. The mean is 64 and a half. So you expect the standard you expect the standard deviation to be negative because it's to the left of the mean. And that's right around here. Now, what formula did I use to do this? Well, I took my value given in the problem, we'll call it x. I subtracted the mean divided by the standard deviation, and that gave me my z value or my standardized deviation for when my mean is shifted to zero. So in other words, this gives me the exact number of standard deviations that this value is from a mean of zero. And that number is right around here. All right, let's do that for the larger female group. Females who are 71 inches, how many actual standard deviations are they away from the mean? Well, if I subtract the mean away and I divide by the number of standard deviations, that'll tell me exactly how many standard deviations they are away from the mean. And in this case, that's two. So what this is telling me here is that my shorter group of females is actually right around here, minus 1.5 standard deviations from the mean. My tallest females are over here, two standard deviations from the mean. What I'm actually looking for is the area, let's see if I can draw this for you real quick, I'm actually looking for the area that's literally between here and Let's go ahead and format that real quick so you can see it better. Okay, so I'm looking for the area between this spot and this spot. So I'm looking for what's in between. And in order to get what's in between but to estimate it, I'm going to use these percentages that I know from the empirical rule. All right, I'll add in this percentage first then this one, then this one, then half of this one, because my, my line here is at minus 1.5 deviations away. So I don't want all of it, I just want half of it. So that gives me 0.136, all the way from the right, added to 0.341, then we've got another 0.341, and then we've got half of that remaining area right there. So that's our last value. And if I add up all those percentages, I get 0.886, which is approximately 88.6% of my females are going to be between 59.625 inches and 71 inches. And that's how I figure that out. All right, and that's an estimate. Again, that's when we're asked to estimate something. We didn't use a Z table here because we weren't asked for the exact value. We could use the z-table here, and we would get a number that's very similar to this, but this is an estimate using this particular rule. All right, let's see another example. Number C, and I've already started answering this one, but I'll go through each part and tell you what I've done. Number C says, if a female, just one female, and that's important, if a single female is randomly selected, Find the probability that her height is between 60.25 and 65.5 inches. Again, we know our female heights are normally distributed with a mean of 64 and a half and a standard deviation of 3.25. So what this problem is really asking here is, what is the percentage or the probability or the area under the curve for a female to be between 60.25 and 65.5 inches. What's the chance of that happening? What, what are the percentage of females that occur in that range? If I choose a female, what's the percentage chance that she's going to be in that range? In order to determine this, I'm actually going to need to use the z-table. Because what I need are the exact areas under the normal probability curve. But in order to use the z-table, I have to convert each of these values into its corresponding equivalent z-value. How do I do that? I use that same formula. I take this number, which I'll call x, 
I subtract our mean, divide by the standard deviation, and that gives me that z value. So let's start with the smaller of the two. If I take 60.25 and subtract the mean and divide by the standard deviation, I get minus 1.31. That's the exact number of standard deviations that I am from the mean. And when I go to use the z-table, that's the first value that I'm going to look up. Let's do this for the larger value now. In this case, I take my larger value, subtract the mean, divide by the standard deviation, and I get a z-value of 0.31. That's the other number I'm going to look up in my z-table. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and end part one, and I'm going to start part two right here where I left off. Thanks for joining me. See you in part two.